in the SEC that not only at this level, the next level has a chance to really shine. Florida is in blue, Tennessee in their home whites. Adu jumps up against Micah Handlockton. He's 7-1 from Florida, and it is controlled by the Gators. And we are underway here at Thompson Bowling Arena. And Ravi, this is Florida offense is the best offense that Tennessee has gone against since Illinois back on December the 9th. The team in white has to be locked in defensively for 40 minutes. Tyree Samuel works it inside, throws it up, can't get it to go. They are one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. They rip one down there, and then the ball is tied up, and the arrow will point to Tennessee. Take a look at the Volunteers lineup. They're 11 and 5, 2 and 1 in the SEC, and they're starting five, some very familiar names. Ziegler, Vescovy, Adu, and Josiah Jordan James, Dalton Connect to Northern Colorado. Transfer has been their offensive star. Well, those five guys better get on the glass because Florida, number three in the nation, 41% on the offensive glass. And Tennessee, as, as physical as they are, they will be tested by this big front line of the Florida Gators. Connect went downhill, offensive rebound put up. No, Adu again. This time he gets it to go. I love how this kid's playing. Rick Barnes couldn't take him out of the game at Georgia in the second half. Played all 20 minutes. Whole bunch of transfers for Florida. Zion Pullen, Walter Clayton Jr., Will Richard, Samuel, and Micah Handlockton in the middle. Pullen. Has it in his hands now. He's guarded by Ziegler, who is feeling a lot better after that knee surgery than a month ago. Compared to where he is now, whole different player. Samuel with point six fires it up, no good. And locking fought for it out of bounds and will go to Tennessee. He ran out of clock time. Ravi, Tennessee, we know where they are defensive efficiency, one of the top five teams in the country. They square you up, they don't open up their hips on the perimeter, and allow easy drives to the paint and they gain rebound as well as anybody, but it will be tested throughout this ball game. They do off a monster game with 15 boards, 10 points, and five blocks against Georgia. And how about the little pull up, and he's got four out of the gate. That is really good side step up action by Adu to relocate to that 15 foot mark. One of the most popular actions in college basketball right now, and one of the most difficult ones to defend. Rick Barnes is looking for another scoring option to go with connect and they do off to a fast start Ziegler starting to shoot a little bit better as well they'd like to see Vescovy get more involved in the offense three ball no good the box out not effective Samuel rips down another offensive rebound that's his second Zion Pullen averaging 18.7 in conference with five, he pulls back. That three, no good. Another offensive rebound gives Samuel three of those. Because Tennessee is switching one through five, they're going to have some mismatches on the offensive glass to try to handle. In Florida, they are so good. Again, the third best offensive rebounding team in the league. So you switch one through five, you take away some things from Florida, but you give up some glass action. And there's that side step up that I'm talking about, Ravi. It's an empty corner involving a guard and a big and it puts you in a bind. You short roll out of it with a seven-footer that can make a shot, tough to handle. Is that the opposite of hard to guard or along the same lines of? A very, in the, within the same family, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Adu fell down, so they used the outlet here, and that is Zakai Ziegler. And it's really good to see him back and more healthy than he was after that knee issue. Planted way down in the paint. Adu threw it up with the left. He takes it away from Hanglock. Oh, what a follow! Connect. That big, explosive, long kid is what he is. Scores know how to score. He's way more than just a jump shooter, man. He can drive it. Offensive firepower on the glass. About seven offensive rebounds combined yeah. by the two teams early in this game. Tennessee off to a 6 2 start. Florida's been cold from the outside, so Clayton drives in the little floater. Vescovy finds the bottom. Well, Clayton is a bulldog. He leads him at 19 points a game in conference play. Very difficult to stay in front of one in blue. They do camped out again down there in the paint. James will hit a three. Ravi Bay, Tennessee, they come in making nine three-point shots a game at 33%. You've got to take away their airspace. They get the three ball rolling on their home floor. They can knock you out. Try it again, James. No, this time he penetrates and dumps it off, and that's going to be a turnover. 
Tennessee off to a good start. Dalton Connect is such a fantastic athlete, man. He can go get it with either hand as an offensive rebounder, which is unique and uncommon. But Josiah Jordan James fires. And Josiah Jordan James, once he gets in a groove, Vescovy can shoot the three. Connect can shoot the three. Ziggler. Only Alabama, BYU, and Miami have five players with 20 or more threes made in the game, along with Tennessee. Alex Condon into the game. He's out of Perth, Australia, a freshman who's played really well, and Connect's going to have to guard him down low. Terrific offensive player, very physical. And that ball is out of bounds. It's going to stick with Florida with four seconds to go. On the clock, underway, little. And the kids that want to shoot from distance, it yep. looks like it's just a flick of the wrist. W where do you develop the ability to shoot from long range? It Where's it come from? Yeah, it starts with his feet and his legs, and he's, he's got great leg strength. And that, that release, though, is so important. If you have touch at the five-foot mark, you have touch at the 22-foot mark. And that's what the, exactly what Dalton Connect is in the shooting. Fade away again. They've had two right at the end of the shot clock. Neither have been successful. So the Gators offense a little out of sorts here. Credit Tennessee's D. James tried a long three. No good. Another offensive rebound. Samuel comes away with it. He'll have Condon. And oh, James from behind got him. And he will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Samuel may have gotten away with the walk right in front of the Tennessee bench. That's what they're complaining about before he threw that pass to a cutting Congdon. Let's see, Jimmy. One, pick it up, two, pick it up. three. No. Yeah, maybe picked it up, but Tennessee, one of those ball clubs, they just give you nothing easy around the rim. You're going to expect hard contact on every play. They win those rim collisions more than they lose them, talking about the team in white. This kid's been a revelation, a freshman who's 6'11", 230 out of Perth, Australia, averaging nine and a half points per game in conference. He grew up playing Australian Roos football and could have become a professional Australian Roos football player. His dad was a pro. So the physicality of the SEC, not a problem for him. In fact, you know how a guy would make one of those layups or dunks and put his hands about six inches off the ground? Right. That's how he described the physicality in the SEC. Like, not a problem, not a thing. Ziegler will go to the line to shoot two. You ever heard anybody do that? How's the SEC when it comes to physical? <laughs> as, as a, and as a true freshman making that <laughs> statement, but he came through that Australian Global Academy through the NBA, and that man, I love this kid's future. He's a big time stroke, a pick and pop threat going forward. Just his fifth year, Ravi, of organized basketball. So you talk about a kid that's got a big upside. You're looking at it. Yeah, see the physical, he's gonna wrap that up, get a little blood on that elbow, not a problem. He described playing Aussie rules football which of course back in the day was was on ESPN 18 of the 24 hours a day. It was, wasn't it? It was on all the time. <laughs> but he would talk about, you know, you're airborne and they're undercutting you. He, he described it as something that sounded like nothing you ever want to do if you didn't grow up doing it. 10-6, balls, 15 to go in the first half. Tough pass as Ali Kugelis entered the game and he threw it away right away and he's been an interesting story for Florida coming off perhaps his best and most complete game after a couple of games in which you wondered like where is Riley Kugel at? Well he has to buy in Kugel uh, into becoming Florida's best defender. He's going to get his chance right now chasing Dalton Connect. He's athletic enough, strong enough, tough enough to make life tough on Dalton Connect. My Meshack, he's got the ball now also into the game for Tennessee. Ziegler's got 10 on the shot clock. And Adu will launch a three, and that's a little too strong. And Kugel with a rebound off a game in which he scored 20. Tennessee's ball screen defense, look at them. They are impacting that ball, not allowing those Florida guards to turn the corner. Toby Awaka into the game as well. I did down low, working one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, good smart decision not to force it up. Rick Barnes, not a head coach that, that plays drop coverage in ball screen defense. High Arker in and out for Kugel. Kind of a, a, a growth for Rick Barnes defensively. Wants to be very aggressive with his bigs. And if you're Florida, you've got to handle that early on ball screening action by Tennessee. Good pass, and there's going to be an offensive foul. Adu lowered the shoulder. 
And there's that Australian rules football. Condon took the contact, went down, and drew the offensive foul. Yeah, as soon as you lower the shoulder, the aesthetics tell you this is going to be called an offensive foul. He's pretty sure he got outside that restricted arc. Oh, man, that was close. Second year for Todd Golden. This was a team, Golden's, that was picked to finish eighth in the preseason poll. They were 16 and 17 overall last year, nine and nine in the conference. They're much better than that this year, aren't they? They, they are, but they have to back it up with a big time win at some point, and this would be it today. Backing down, Adu throws up the hook. Basketball is so new to him, and Alex Condon having an impact in this game. Now he just went right at one of the best post defenders in this conference. I mentioned Adu played all 20 minutes in the second half at Georgia. A testament to the strength and conditioning here at Tennessee as well. Really nice play by Awaka. He fended off Condon and then threw a jump hook in off the window. And that's double trouble, is it not, between Adu and Awaka playing inside for Tennessee? Awaka is a big, big, thick body. Condon gets down to that low block again. He goes with the left. That time Adu got a hand on it. Oof, and a loose ball. Awaka, Condon, and Samuel all there. Came down a little awkwardly on Awaka, but he is okay. Tonight, Super Tuesday, Double Dip Pit hosting Syracuse. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then Hunter Dickinson and number three, Kansas, will be in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. Both games on ESPN and the app. Syracuse and Pitt get the 7 o'clock window as we start our game two hours early, 5 o'clock. The thinking behind it was, at least according to the people that were involved, Help those that are here try to get home a little earlier. The temperatures are supposed to be near zero tonight, and anything that melted will freeze to make for hazardous driving conditions in the Knoxville area. Yeah, if you're a Tennessee fan watching this game right now, thinking the game's at seven, we are live, and you should be here. <laughs> Correct? Yes. Dropped missed to try to follow it up, and he picked up the foul and give the uh, Vols fans, who are historically one of the great fan bases not only in spirit, but in numbers. The lower bowl is nearly full on a day in which it was very difficult to move around the greater Knoxville area. I learned this morning you can use the owner's manual in your rental car <laughs> to clean off your car. It, off it, it takes 35 minutes, but it's versatile. Hauk into the game, and he gets called with a hook. That's Hauk with a hook on a walk-up. Well, Hauk is a fighter. It's spelled H-A-U-G-H, -H, which we need to visit with him about that. But Rick Barnes knows he has a team, Ravi, very capable of getting the Final Four. And the difference is the kids don't connect. Offensively, he's got a guy that can bail them out that they have not had the last few years. Freddie Dillion is getting set to check in. Vescovi using that speed to get in that corner where he's now double teamed. Meshack with six on the shot clock. A pull up from the free throw line, extended, knocks it down. Jemai Meshack getting a little more confident with his offensive shooting. Yeah, he's starting to come on. He made a couple of corner threes against Georgia. Watch this kid, man. He is so rugged for a true freshman. He's not afraid of the contact at all. Great pass. Kugel with a head fake. Boy, Condon and Kugel, he couldn't get it to go. And that's the second one that was halfway down for Riley Kugel that doesn't finish its journey. There's that early Adu. ball screen. Oh, what a block wow. at the rim by Condon. Condon had 10 offensive rebounds at Ole Miss as a true freshman on the road against a rugged Ole Miss team. And if you bite as a pup, you will bite as a dog. And that's exactly the way this kid's trend. Easy one for Kugel there, almost like a layup. He didn't really leave his feet. And he knocked down that shot. It's 14-11 on a three. Well, initially, you guard Kugel as a driver. If he makes a three, so be it. But you cannot let that kid start driving hard with his right hand. That's going to be quick pass, and Meshack with the wow. reverse. I love the pivot, though, by Meshack, because had he gone off of two feet where he caught it, it would have been blocked. Just pivoted away from the shot block. Really well done by Meshack. Kugel, that's going to be out of bounds off of him. And May turnover. How about Mayshack, man, to score at one end and get right in the chest of Riley Kugel on the other. No celebration by Mayshack. And Vescovy throws a low strike on the outside corner that Mayshack is going to find right at the rim and pivots away from the shot block. Good start for Rocky Top. Good baseball reference. Tip closed up. So. Shut piece. It's been a bit. 
Gators seeking their first win in Knoxville since 2014, 0-7 over that span. And back-to-back big-time home games here against Florida and then Saturday on ESPN at 2 against Alabama for this Tennessee team. Vescovy. That was straight on, a little too strong. And a good job from behind by Hauk to knock that one away from Meshack, and that's what allowed the Gators to come away with it. Ryan Pullen back in the game. Well, they need to get Pullen going. He's yeah. a second leading scorer, averaging 19 points a game in conference play. And Tennessee's got multiple defenders with size, which you have to have against these big Florida guards. Condon has got Dillion on him, a huge advantage for him with the height down low. They haven't been able to get it to him yet. Richard goes baseline, very good defense by Vescovy. It comes right back to him, and it's a turnover, and here's Dillion. Ahead to Vescovy. Good pass, Adu. Oh, he lost it on the way up, but somehow it went off the backboard and in. The improvement of his hands over the last couple of years is phenomenal. The individual work that they do here, different ways to teach it, but man, Adu seldom, Ravi, does he misfire on a, on a fastball thrown six feet away. He's got six points, three of eight shooting to lead the way for Tennessee. Condon, uh, it's too strong, and an air ball. A three will put him up 10. Tennessee is playing at the fastest pace that they've played at in 16 years. It goes back to the Bruce Pearl days and their ability to win the elbows off the initial push with the second or third pass really triggers them. To me, the key for Tennessee offensively is what Santi Vescovi just did. He gets the paint, starts spraying it around, Tennessee's at their best, and he can also obviously make shots. And play good defense as we saw the last trip down. He made only two shots against Georgia, but he was a plus 20 for the game. Six on the shot clock, and Houck's going to have to get it away. And Richard, three ball from the corner, no good. Vescovy push one on one. Expect him to take it. Threw it up, and there's no contact or a foul. And look at Tennessee. They do not open up their hips. They teach squared up, squared up, squared up daily. They demanded, constantly worked on. Another contested shot, frustration from Zion Pullen. It's that early transition ball screen that Tennessee is famous for. They'll butt screen up top, they'll run the screen on the ball when it gets to the wings. They immediately put the ball on you. Look at Adrian, yeah. how about his ninth shot this game? We're a little more than halfway through. He's got eight and a lead's 11. Well, Rick Barnes talked to us today about we've got to continue to shoot the three ball, but we have to pound that thing inside. That's, that's who he has always been as the head coach. Adu answering the call. Condon fakes his three, then he takes it to the hole. He get fouled, and it's likely going to be on Adu. Let's wait for the call, and it is a foul on Jonas Adu. Adu is averaging 14 points and 10 rebounds in three conference games. He's a very physical on-ball screener, but then out of those screens, he really gets active, either rolling down as a post-up score. Season, Rick Martin will also switch him out to take on a point guard, one of the real key defenders right now in the SEC. A couple of early statistics here. Florida is four for 18. They're shooting 22%. Four field goals for Florida. Adu has four field goals by himself. Well, if you're Florida, you gotta generate some points from the free throw line. That's the, the key features of Florida offensively is on the offensive glass and the ability to get fouled. Well, Tennessee, as rugged as they are defensively, pretty good job of defending without fouling in this game. Free throw is missed, so it's 22-12. Connect, who got a good break, is now back in the game, and he forced one there, may have got away with a travel. Don Daly said that ball was knocked out of his hands, therefore no travel. Now he goes into the paint, and a kick. Rounding out, oh, the rim's a little tight. The rim's weren't ready for the five o'clock start. Well, that's a good look, though. Connect has gravity ability as a driver. Some guys only have gravity ability as a shooter. That kid, he demands attention when he puts it on the deck, frees up others. Oh, they're gonna get a trip. What a job by Awaka there to grab that double and nearly force the turnover. We told you about Jimmy's journey. He's on his way to Lexington for a Mississippi State. In Kentucky at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Also tomorrow, USC will take on Arizona. 
That is at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Another chance to see Bronny James trying to get it going for the USC Trojans. College basketball tomorrow at 7 and 10 on ESPN2. Mississippi State and Tennessee are the two most physical teams in the SEC. And Kentucky defensively gave up 89 in regulation at A&M to an A&M team that had scored 55 and 53 coming in. Anxious to see that Kentucky defense tomorrow with Tolu Smith on the floor. More good defense there. James got a hand on that to knock it away. Seven minutes to go. Florida's got 12 points in the first half. Connect. Boy, did they bail him out there. We're going to get a foul on Denzel Aberdeen. Rabbi, you never want to foul a non-rim threat drive. And Connect was forcing the ball downhill, but he was not forcing it towards the rim. Man, show your hands, move your feet, but don't bail him out to your point. Tennessee with a 10-point lead. Connect has taken two shots. He's made one. He's only got two points. Good job by Florida being physical on that out-of-bounds under. Good look, and he flushes that. Both of his buckets have been dunks. Good pass from Ziegler in the paint. Tennessee as good as anybody in this league scoring off their initial action on out-of-bounds under into their secondary action. That time it was Connect with a hard, violent cut to the rim. Walk a quick switch and then Connect gets back on his guy. Ziegler, a pain there, and the ball out of bounds. It'll stick with Florida. Their defense is amped up tonight. Well, the physicality of, T of Tennessee shows up on out of bounds underplays when they're on defense and when they are offense. They set such hard knock you in the nose screens, and that time Connect just makes the play with a hard cut out of the corner. He's all of 6'6. Everything about this kid says he's going to be a long-term pro and a long-time guy. We're talking to Rick Barnes about Dalton Connect while he was at Northern Colorado, kind of peeking behind the curtain on the whole transfer portal and the impact it has on college basketball. And I asked him, when do you think Connect started to think about the next year? while he was so good at Northern Colorado last year. At what point did he begin to think, you know, maybe a larger conference, maybe a, a place like Tennessee or any other? When does that, he said, I don't think he thought about it no. until the end of the year. That's not who he is or who his family is. That, that It's a very simple-minded family that has great values. They don't want the noise right now of agents around their kid. I mean, Dalton Connect is all about the right things. And Rick Barnes said he, they had to come and kick him out of the gym on Sunday. He's one of those guys that just works and works and works. So he's all in about Tennessee winning, and they'll, he'll consider his next step after this year. But I love the fact that Rick Barnes said he reminds me a little bit of Kevin stopped. Durant. The clock in terms has now been corrected. His love for the game and his love for work. Certainly Rick Barnes would know that from coaching Kevin Durant. All right, so the clock stopped at 22. You heard the voice of Don Daly as the officials now using the microphone to help the folks out at home watching. They're at 11 on the shot clock. Justin Ganey had one go down and then came back out. He struggled a little bit shooting. And that one right by Connect. Good take. And a layup from Walter Clayton yeah, Jr. Hard to, hard to keep Clayton off that elbow. And he's, his momentum change is as good as there is in this league. Just got Connect to open up a little bit, took advantage of it. But James just whacked Richard, and as a result, Connect went with his left, all three of his shots in the paint. Richard to the hole. Denied by the rim. Ball in the air, kept alive, and it sticks with the Gators. Ravi, the physicality of Tennessee on their off-ball screening action or on-ball is tremendous. Watch right here. Bam. Shoulder to shoulder connect in Josiah Jordan-James, which gets connect going to his left hand. The interesting thing about connect, when he drives the basketball, he's equal-handed. Yeah. 35 drives this year out of connect. 18 of them to his left, 17 of them to his right. Just terrific balance out of this kid, three and white. When Richard went to the hole and threw that ball up against the bottom of the rim, he didn't reset the shot clock. And this is another clock issue.
Daly and Burdett are over there. Once they make their decision, we will hear what that decision is from Don Daly. To me, this is more about Florida's defense. It doesn't look like we're going to hear right now anyway. Is he going over to the official score? Is this more about Tennessee's defense or Florida's offense that they're struggling from the field 5 and 21? Florida, rather, they live driving the ball. And Tennessee knows it, so their ability to switch out and stay in front of the ball and be heavy gap protection has caused in Florida a lot of problems. Looks like they're dealing with something on the back of uh, the official Don Daly. After review, the game clocks and shot clocks have been corrected. Thank you very much, Don Daly. And again, the officials able to communicate to the people at home and us. So they got the game and the shot clock now where they should be. 6.01.27 to go on the shot clock. And to your question, watch Tennessee's ability to just get their nose on your numbers, stay in front of the ball for the most part. If they get in a bind, they switch it out. If they don't open up their hips, look at that on-ball defense, man. They are low and squared up. Trying to get the ball down to Samuel. That's just two large bodies with he and a walk-up. Four on the shot clock. They're going to have to force one up. Richard does. That finds the bottom. You've got to make hard-guarded shots against Tennessee. I, I think at least three or four per half. Tough cover, right? It sure is. Connect hung in the air and that high, high release point. And just like that, he now has eight in the game. He shoots every ball with conviction. And that's what great shooters do. Another three on the way. That one is off to the left. Zakai Ziegler with the rebound. Walter Clayton misses from the outside. And the Gators, two of eight from three. Connect feeling it. Oh, boy, bottom of the net for Dalton Connect now with 11. When he shoots it from 15 or from 22, the release is the same. His last game, he had 36. Barnes said he got that look in his eye, and you mentioned Durant. He may have that look in his eye again. They're going to look for him, too. His team knows when he's feeling it, keep the ball in the hands of three. They can work him off of a ball screen. He's got a good physical handle. Yeah. That's a moving screen by a walker. That's that's partly on Connect and partly on a walker to not sprint out and get set quickly. But Connect is good off that ball screen, a closeout guard, but man, his ability to rise and fire, watch the pop, bam, right there. And his acceleration off the floor as a 6'6 kid is exceptional. Always shot ready, showing the hands as the ball's in the air towards him. The rise, release, rotation, and just a very difficult cover, Rab. He's got pro lift on that jump shot. We just saw it. He's a fast, physical, long finisher. And the mentality of Kevin Durant to shoot every ball with conviction is impressive. That's a good call. You were wondering when that whistle was going to blow. Estrella basically pushed Samuel as he went to the basket. It affected the shot, and then Don Daly blew the whistle on him. 13 into the game now for Tennessee. That's J.P. Estrella. Big, big body at 6'11". The freshman out of Scarborough, Maine. Well, that's the third big body that Rick Barnes has yep. to work with, with Estrella. And the charge for 13 and White right now as a freshman is to come in and just play as hard as anybody on the floor. And you've got five fouls to give. Let's use them, but let's keep our physicality and our strength and our body blows going on when you do check in. Samuel's good, but he was driving to the basket and ended up further away from the basket thanks to Estrella's push. Now, Florida's got to lock in right now. That, I think they will find their offense. They're coming averaging 80 points a ball game, but can they lock up on this end? And oh, wow. Connect cannot be denied. He uses the window and he'll have a chance to finish a three point play. Remy, that high release has also gotten higher under Rick Barnes, who started it years ago at Texas. Watch how high this release is around the rim. That's worked on time and time again in this culture and this system. Just the isolation of a 6'6 guy to rise up, bam, pop the feet, power up over the top of you. Tough to cover, man. Dalton Connect. 14 points, six of seven from the floor. He's Dalton Connect. And he's had better games on the road, so this is just another very encouraging sign 
for Tennessee and Connect being able to do it at home. Another three missed, another offensive rebound, a long one. Are they going to stop them on defense and start to make some baskets on offense, or this is going to get away from them? Samuel in the paint. Double team blocked from behind by James. Estrella with a block. And here comes Connect, and they have numbers. Connect left handed. Oh, wow. oh, my goodness. Dalton Connect is in a zone. And the crowd is on its feet. Kugel knocks down a three to sit people down. But they'll rise again if Connect gets the ball again. Ziegler, great pass. Estrella fouled. And Tennessee is in a rhythm right now offensively. Dalton Connect is the best pro prospect in the SEC. I'm not telling you what, he's one of the better pro prospects in college basketball. There's not a lot of guys at his size that can do what he can do with the ball. Physical driver, physical jump shooter. Dalton Connect, want to be. Thank you, KC. Those three losses in a row were Purdue, Kansas, and North Carolina. Connect scored 14 in the last four minutes. Rick Barnes had the pleasure of coaching Kevin Durant at Texas, and man, that was must-see TV in college. In the last couple of games, Dalton Connect is trend he's trending in that direction. Trending is important. Dalton Connect is not the best defender that Tennessee has, but he's good enough to play in the NBA right now as a defender. That, that league values offense, and this kid, you could put him in a game tonight, He'd find a way to score, and he's a good enough athlete. He'll hold up defensively in that lead. Yeah, Kugel misses another three. The offensive rebound, that's a brick. And again, Pullen will get it. And Flores got to get the ball to the paint off the drive of the pass. And Kugel, and that's going to be contact. Vescovi is going to pick up the foul. And Riley Kugel, offensively aggressive there, will shoot two. Yeah, he is the most explosive off the first bounce and step that Florida has. And Big time athlete that has had his role adjusted. He was the primary offensive guy last year when Colin Castleton went out, but with new offensive guys around him this year, he needs to get back to be that dog defense, drive the ball hard, get on the glass, one of the elite athletes in this league. He played three minutes the other night, and after that game, he and Todd Golden got themselves a one on one conversation. Kind of a reset, recalibrate. When you talk about the transfers, Poland, Clayton, Samuel, and locked in. Four guys out of the transfer portal, all getting big minutes. And he started the first 11 games, did Kugel, and ended up now coming off the bench. And he knew prior to last game he's going to play great. And to his credit, both of theirs, he did with the 20. They get it down to Estrella. Still have plenty of time on the shot clock, and Vescovi, ball fake, left hand just a little too strong. They'll run, they got a two on one. Oh, pretty finger roll that time by Ryan Pullen, Zion Pullen, I should say. If you can limit Florida's times that they get to the paint without a pass, that's a big deal, because man, Florida, they are so good. Multiple guards could just punch that paint off the bounce as they're bringing it from defensive end. Ziegler, the kick, Meshack, too strong. And for all the points that Dalton Connect had, those 14 and four minutes, it kind of felt like you'd want to have him at least touch it once each time down. I would. And it's a very important 90 seconds left right now for Florida Ravi. They got a chance to cut this thing to single digits before the half. They have not found their groove offensively, which is not easy to do against Tennessee. But again, get to that foul line, continue to crash the offensive glass, and continue to drive that ball with force if you're Florida. That's who they are. You can't get away from it on the road. Another free throw miss and another offensive rebound for Samuel. Pulling the push, the hard take, connect with a block and a foul. Exactly what I'm calling for by Florida. They, they cannot jump shoot their way back into this game. If it becomes a jump shooting contest, Dalton Connect's going to win it. But what Florida can do with multiple big guards is isolate a little bit, size their guy up, and win their battle. Florida has 11 offensive rebounds. You mentioned the two things that 
Our trademarks for this Todd Golden team this year, offensive rebounding. They are dominating 11, and they've got to make their free throws. And so far tonight, near 80%. Twelfth in the country in free throw attempts per game as Poland knocks that one down. So they've got it at ten. If you're Todd Golden right now, you're thinking lock up, lock up, clean up the miss if we have one. Continue to chip in this thing to end the first half. Gators are nine of eleven from the free throw line tonight. Connect has it, fires. Oh, got it! Now. That's why you wonder, does he have to touch it every time down? Dalton connect. 19 points in the first half. Good hands, Meshack. Good defense that time. Dalton connect. He's doing it all right now. Good job of using his link to stay in front of a smaller guard. That violent cut by connect into that Watch jump it. shot. Watch it. Yeah. Watch it. He is absolutely on. Fire. 22 points in the half for Connect. Nine of ten and three of three from three. What a show. You got one more in you, Jimmy? You got eight seconds. Uh, Get it to him. His name says how you have to guard him. Stay oh, connected. And that's a mistake. They turn it over, and Kugel will lay it in. That's a big, big yes, turnover there at the end of the half to cut it to 12. But connect the he scores 16 in this half. He'd have 38 for the game, which would be a new career high for Dalton Connect. Well, you and I saw him go for 37 at North Carolina earlier this year. And we said in the first half, he's averaging 31 in true road games. He has a swagger and a confidence about his game that the lights are on. So is he. He brought the crowd to its feet with his performance from midway through the first half to the end. Adu sets up, and he was the guy that carried him early, and he knocks down that jump shot. A really good feel for Adu to flash when he did. He got behind his defender and just won the foot race to the open spot in the floor. Adu's got eight, and the Vols are shooting 60% for the game. Hoogle, pretty little teardrop in the lane. If you're Florida, Ravi, you've got to keep driving this ball, man, with force. You're trying to win the game within the game, which is who gets the bonus first in this second half. Yeah, tough pass. Adu went down on the floor to get it. That's hard for a seven-footer. And he threw up the left hand over Condon. He has really learned how to initiate contact before he shoots the ball. Didn't do it his first couple of years. He would just catch it and go straight up. Now he catches, hits, and finishes. Back-to-back yeah, -back really good games for Adu. Oh, Condon lost it on the way up. Samuel had it. Adu's there to help rip it away. We'll have a jump ball, and it'll stick with the Gators. Condon had that slip out of his hands. He had an easy layup as he had Vescovy on him. Tennessee trying to move to 12 and 5 and 3 and 1 in the conference. Auburn and Alabama begin the day both unbeaten in the SEC, each at 3 and 0. And then Ole Miss 11 and 0 at home has been a terrific story for the SEC to start the year. Deflected off the inbounds. And on the floor we go, and did they get the timeout? Condon was trying, they didn't give it to him. It's a Tennessee basketball. Yeah, think about the job that Nate Oates and Bruce Pearl, they continue to do, making Auburn and Alabama relevant nationally in basketball year after year after year. And Chris Beard right now would certainly be in the top of the list of conversations for SEC Coach of the Year, considering where they're picking and where they are right now. His kid, Jamarian Sharp, last week, Ravi, had Ooh. nine blocks by himself against Florida, 16 overall as a team. Ties an SEC regular season record. Ziegler back cut, and he threw it right behind James, who was thinking, I'm cutting the basket. He looked over at Barnes and said, I'll take responsibility. Did Josiah Jordan James for that? Well, Ziegler not scoring in this game, but he did have four assists in the first half. He is a hound, just a dog pest on the ball defensively. Samuel will launch a high arcing three in and out. Yeah, if you can't make Adu pay for going that hard with the ball, just continue to do it, right? Yep, Vescovy looking for the outlet. Adu thought about it. 
Here we've gone basically two minutes. Connect hasn't been able to get involved. And James fires a three. That's off. How about Ziegler getting in the way of pulling? Now, this is a different one. That Condon can really shoot it. adu has got to be careful to allow Condon to pick and pop like that. It's different when Samuels does it, but if you're Tennessee, you have to remember that Dalton Connect put on a clinic in the first half and get him going again offensively. I watched Dalton Connect Ravi at halftime. He took 12 shots, he made 10. That foul is on Josiah Jordan James. He comes out of the game. Toby Owaka comes in for Tennessee. How about Ziegler? You mentioned the assists. Still one point. He hasn't taken a shot yet. Only a free throw. 14 point lead. Kugel spots up, threes off. And Awaka had it, and they get a run out. Cutting is Connect. Met at the rim, the rebound to Adu. Yeah, Another block for Condon, but a loose ball pickup. Right, that is Tennessee, they're at their best. Santi Vescovi getting into paint. That's when everything is going. Oh, what a block by Adu. Kinnick throws it up, Condon with another block, and two falls are on the floor. Got to take advantage of this, and Clayton along three finds the bottom. And a good job to have the numbers of Florida to fire a three, because even if you miss, you got the numbers to rebound it on the offensive glass. Pretty good little punch back right there by Florida. Alex Condon has three blocks in the game for the Gators. Ziegler into the paint. Oh, he threw his elbow right into the face of the defender. The foul and a chance for a three-point play. Aggressive take by Zakai Ziegler. They are so strong with their bodies on both ends of the floor. But they force the officials into the game as much as anybody in this league. They go right at your jersey as drivers. They get their shoulder into your chest. It is game over, no matter if you're 5'10 or not, like Sakai Ziegler. And a 15-point lead now for Tennessee. And Dalton Connect will come out. Very similar start to the second half than the first half. Adu went off. Connect had one field goal. He went out for a few minutes. And we know what happened in the second half of the first half. He exploded. And they increased their lead here. Can they? They did, I think. They mean. did. No, they did. Yeah, that's the luxury of this Tennessee team has real depth. Some teams play nine guys. Tennessee plays nine guys with real depth. Pulling behind the back, and he did a one-on-one -on -one dribbling exhibition to get Vescovy into a vulnerable position. Zion Pullen last year, Ravi, led the nation, scoring right at 10 points per game off pick and roll action. Talking about number zero in blue, the kid taking it out of bounds. Now that's also good action for Todd Golden to go to in this second half. Get him in a ball screen, get him going downhill. He can really deliver as a scoring guard off that on ball action. Three time all Big West honoree Pullen. <laughs> Connect and Adu have combined for 36 points. The Gators have 37, and Ganey from behind knocks that out of bounds as Kugel was trying for a layup. This is that physicality that Tennessee plays with. Watch as the, before the ball's handed out of bounds, the guys in white jerseys, they will lean on you. They'll get their arm into your chest. They lock you up. Look at the walker right there, forcing his guy out. Yeah, to my point, there's just no easy entries. But it all starts with how physical they, they are before the ball is ever handed from the official to the out-of-bounds under trigger man. 6'8", 250 pounds out of Hyde Park, New York, is Toby Owaka, number 11, and White. And now Condon and Estrella match up down low. Condon tried to ball fake, got that taken away. Ganey to the ground, and the ball's with the ball. A nice defensive play by Ganey to stay on his feet, come up with a swipe. Estrella went hard, and he'll be fouled. 
And another look, you can see Ziegler come over and give him a nod of approval, and that's what we like out of our freshman. An aggressive take and two more free throws when we come back. Sakai Ziegler, bam, right there. The contact that these guys embrace and seek out. Uncommon in college basketball. ESPN so famous for its music themes. You know that's the NBA and Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern time. We'll start things off. It's Giannis and the Bucks. They're in Cleveland to take on Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs, 7.30 Eastern time. And boy, the Lakers, all of a sudden, they're passing interior. LeBron, Anthony Davis, really looks good. Mavericks, Lakers, Wednesday, 8.30 Eastern time on ABC. NBA countdown will tip off the evening at 7 Eastern time on ABC. That shot is missed by Estrella. Look at a walk up, pick up that rebound. Yeah, a walk uh, one of the top rebounders in the country, gets one every five minutes. Ziegler can do that, knocks down a three and looks at his bench. And it's all Tennessee here in the second half. Great hands by Ziegler, and he will try to run it out. Three on two. Meshack. And out, hand locked in, checks back into the game, and he comes down with a rebound. Rev, you cannot take away a backdoor cut, though, any better than what Zakai Ziegler did on that last play. That's what Florida right there, they need more of that, those no-pass drives in their conversion offense. But Zakai Ziegler locking his guy up one pass away, and when the, the plant guy goes, watch Zakai Ziegler. He's denied, deny, bam, he just whips that head around and whips that left arm around to interrupt the basketball. You cannot do it any better defending the backdoor cut than what Zakai Ziegler did. Nine Pullen's first free throw is good, so the lead, which was 20, shrinks by one. Just a little bit more physical play tonight from Tennessee. And when you think about this conference, physicality is an absolute trait, Jimmy, you have to have to win. Veteran players, physical play. Who's in the same class with Tennessee? Mississippi State, and I, was, I would say Auburn. Auburn is very physical, and then they, their backups are physical. The Cardwell kid, the backup center yeah. for Auburn, he's as physical as anybody in this league, that Auburn team. Auburn, Kentucky, Tennessee, our final four threats, and, and Alabama, who will come in here Saturday, I think is right there with them. Danny can't get on track with the three. Estrella was thinking about a dunk before he dribbled the ball. Pulling in Kugel. Now it's Clayton, the trailer. They'll get Ziegler, I think, or is Don Daly looking elsewhere? Yeah, he was. He was looking at Ganey. Contact with the body. And at your point, this is what Florida has made a living doing, getting to the paint, getting to the free throw line. Today, they've shot very well. 11 of 13 from the strike. Right, this, this Clayton kid, though, he's going to be a tough kid to handle over the next eight or nine weeks in this league. He was actually recruited by Florida as a wide receiver in football. I mean, he's, he's that kind of an athlete. And goes to Iona, and then when he, when he left there last year, Coach went to, uh, Patino went to St. John's. Todd Golden won that one-on-one -on -one matchup against Rick Patino to get this kid to come back home and big time scoring guard Walter Clayton Jr. at 28 against Pittsburgh earlier this year. They go so fast with the ball. Out of bounds, Daly looks this way and it's gonna be Gator basketball. Jimmy SEC Network on Sunday, women's basketball triple header. Lady Vols host Vandy right here at the Food City Center at 3 Eastern time, and then number one South Carolina will square off against Texas A&M. That is the SEC Network women's hoop triple header on Sunday. Don Staley once again has her young ladies rolling. Texas A&M much improved this year, but man, that is a that is some rough sledding. You talk about rough sledding in Knoxville right now. It's rough sledding when you take on South Carolina, right? Yeah, it's probably a lot rougher taking on South Carolina. I mean, the sled thing makes going down the hill smooth and fast. <laughs> well, that's what they're doing right now. 90 points a game with the top five teams. Women's game scoring and Texas A&M, they're going to have to find a lot of offense to hang in that thing. 
defensively really, really good. That's, that league is just ridiculous year after year, just like the men's side this year. Eight, nine, possibly ten teams, I think, will find their way in that NCAA tournament in March from the SEC. The record is eight. I think they got a terrific chance to go past that this year. Well, the bottom of the conference has obviously struggled, and that's why they're at the bottom. Big surprise, Arkansas 0 at 3. Missouri and Vanderbilt each winless so far in the SEC. Yeah, that Arkansas team is just no, no groove at all right now. They don't have the identity that Eric Musselman's team has had the last three or four years. Just the fight competitive dogs that that team lacks right now is concerning. I believe they have Texas A&M at home tonight, and Bud Walton connects. No, he can't get that to go. Estrella, uh, nice work. His, Offensive rebound his, and a put back. His minutes are going to grow now. He's in there banging, getting his feet underneath himself as an offensive rebounder. Really good. Gets out hard, hedges the ball. Last three trips down, Florida has ended up at the free throw line because they're doing that. Driving it to the basket, it's Clayton Jr. who lays that up and in, and they stay within distance, 15. Yeah, you got to put him in traffic. You're forcing weak, and you're forcing where your help defense is. Help defense was frozen. Connect nearly started off that spree with the same shot, although this half he was able to convert it. Ziegler lost that ball. Florida pushes to the paint again. They do. They miss the layup. No foul. Bodies are flying. Samuel gets it to go. He's got a chance for a three-point play. Ravi, the ball finds energy. Tyree Samuel sprinted the floor and actually sealed off his defender, which allowed the first layup attempt to go. But because of Tyree Samuel running right down the middle of the pipe, boom, right there. He seals off Josiah Jordan James. Therefore, he's right underneath the rim as an offensive rebounder. Boy, a key get back and be a big free throw make here by Tyree Samuel. Remember Ziegler had the four assists, and now the turnovers are catching up. He's got three of those. Barnes just had a word with him. And as a result, chance to pull within 12. They were just down 20, what felt like a minute ago. Samuel knocks down the free throw. Mentioned Estrella earning some extra minutes. Ganey, as they try to find his offense, his defense has been very good, and that is one way you pick up time at Tennessee with your defense. Estrella, too quick on that pass. He lost it. And the Gators go right back to the free throw line again. Ravi, Tennessee turning it over 23% of their possessions in this game. And that's the difference of a knockout punch of being up 20 and where they are right now, just careless with the basketball. And you turn it over against these Florida guards. I've talked about their ability to get to the rim on, on a zero pass push. And Will Richard has a chance to cut this thing to 10. 75% free throw shooter, the transfer from Belmont back in 22. Just four for his last 19 coming in. I love his pregame ritual. Shower, call his mom, say a prayer. I, very similar to me, still to this day. You still do that? Yes. Well, I know you shower, which is required. Yes. I, I, I always didn't call about the other two. Call and check in on my mom. And working with you, you know the third one's going to be there. <laughs> it has to. Connect. Trying to get on track. He'll get the foul out top. He threw it off the top of the backboard. It won't count. I'm not sure I've ever seen the angle of that on a backboard <laughs> shot. He's now bringing trick shots into the game. Ravi, the strength that he drives with is hard to pick up on film. But it's very difficult to knock him off of his path. Yeah, that, no. That's a non-rim threat try <laughs> that he gets to drop. It's <laughs> you practice hitting it off the upper corner of the backboard and having it go through? He may. He literally lives in the gym. Watch it. Boom. Wow. Oh, they set it up for him. He recovers, and he's able to get it in. How physical Tennessee is on baseline, out of bounds, under plays. It's ridiculous how they get body on body on both ends. Yeah, Florida making a living now by driving into the paint. And another hard take there by Clayton. Adu deep in the paint. And he gets the left hand to the fall. 
Notice Adu is putting on an offensive show of his own. He's got 16 on 8 of 13 shooting. Do you know how hard it is for a 7-footer to spin into a left-handed shot like he did? It is ridiculously hard. He made it look easy. Out back into the game for Florida. Tennessee tightens up its defense, makes the drive a little harder. Five on the shot clock. Out with Meshack on him. They got to shoot it. Clayton's three around and out. Adu with another rebound. Every Tennessee defender stayed squared up on the basketball to perfection. Connect bump out top, and the crowd here, you can hear them looking for a foul, and there's a reach. Adu's moving towards a double double. He's got 16 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, watch Tennessee again. They just really lean on you and make it a line of scrimmage play on baseline out of bounds under, and they win the majority of them. Watch Adu. The spin and the left handed soft finesse finish. Hard to guard, Carl Ravage. Hard to guard. Connect. They've got three more field goals than the entire Florida Gator team, which is all well and good. But then you look at some of the other players that you think would contribute. Vescovy, one for four. Ziegler's just two of two from the field. That's going to be a foul on Kugel. As a coach, is you all right with the, the imbalance, 24 and 16 from two different guys? Absolutely. Because the two guys that are doing it, Ravi, Dalton Connect makes should make everybody feel different about Tennessee come March. Because they've been knocked out in the past when they've at times gone through offensive struggles. He changes, at least in my eyes, how I view Tennessee in that NCAA tournament this year. He's looking for a little high screen with 10 on the shot clock. There's that physical play, and it's going to be Florida basketball's Connect missed the layup. Dalton Connect is getting fouled right now every time he has the ball. Rick Barnes in the year of Don Daly letting him know. Tennessee 17 out of 20 from the charity stripe, and they're already in the bonus. Man, keep driving that thing. Too much oh, dribbling yeah. and a turnover. Danced with it. Connect will do it himself. There's another foul. He'll shoot two. There's a difference in dancing with the ball and driving the ball with force. Florida danced with it. That previous possession, watch the contact there. I think he gets hit again right there. When you've got your hand on the airborne shooter, it doesn't get called. Rick Barnes right into Don Daly, but man, this kid was ripping rope in that first half. Nine out of 10 from the field. I was wondering when you were going to get it in. You practiced ripping rope no, this but morning. Just, that's what he does. Yeah. Think about the balance in this kid's game, Ravi. Coming into today, he had taken 103 jump shots and 84 layup slash dunks. And that's, well, that's the type of offensive balance that you have to have a versatile defensive individual defender and a versatile defensive team. And that three-pointer, uh, that three field goal made him go by Chris Lofton. Most points in a three-game span in the last quarter Century. Dalton Connect now is number one on the list, and he picks up a rebound here. I well, appreciate the effort of Adu to switch out on a shooter and keep his balance and not lunge. Florida had a chance to get it to 10. And now Tennessee up 14, and the ball as we hit the midway point in the second half. Connect on the curl. Six on the shot clock. Mayshack. Pretty pass, Adu, money. That's as good of an offensive possession as you'll see in the SEC all year. They ran multiple actions. They kept the ball moving. A good job by Adu to space off to the short corner. Another forceful drive by Meshack with a purpose. Adu and Connect are 19 for 30 from the floor. Incredible shooting for the two of them. Miss inside and the box out. Tennessee asserting itself one more time. Connect. Three ball, net. The, the rope continues to rip when this kid rises. You cannot allow him to have any airspace. If he beats you by putting it on the deck, so be it. He gets his, buckets in a hurry, doesn't no, he? Oh, man, his, his rise and release is as good as I've seen in this league in a long time. He runs to that corner, a little bit of a foot fake, and you step back a half a foot, he says, thank you very much. Give him 29 in the game.
Well, Dalton Connect, the, the release prior to game was true, and it continues in this game. That stroke of consistency again, right? That elbow is slightly out in front of that shot wrist, and then that release and rotation, how he holds that follow through every single time, just hours and hours in the gym. I found it very interesting that Rick Barnes said he has some Kevin Durant in him in the fact that he's never phased by the big moment and he shoots it with conviction every single time. But the other common trait that he has with Kevin Durant is he says, Dalton Connects understand, I will take him out of the game. Yeah, he seen me do it to Josiah Jordan, James, and Kai Ziegler, it does not matter. And Dalton Connect, once he got that message, that defensive intensity has ratched up. You're looking at what right now would be the, the favorite for the SEC Player of the Year, just four games into this and, SEC. And, and pulling away. And pulling away right now. You know, my Sports Center buddy Craig Kilborn used to, during Sports Center basketball highlights, say release, rotation, splash. You ah. could say release, rotation, rip. Just the alliteration, because you're into the whole rip thing now with it. <laughs> well, this kid is a. He is a special talent coming off of a 36-point game at Georgia on the road. He's seven shy of that right now in this game. Only he, Bernard King, Allen Houston, and Grant Williams have multiple 35 points. Three seconds games on here, the road. Jimmy on the shot clock. Three, two, one. And Adu ties him up. So coming out of a timeout, you'd think you'd have a bit of a better plan. And is it a shot clock violation or a jump ball and an arrow to Florida? Daly and Burdett were talking over. Ravi, it's, it's one thing to have a plan, but then it's another thing to go out and the X that you put down as the defender on the board is wearing a Tennessee jersey. So Daly and Burdett go over there. Again, there was about half a second left, you could see. Adu tied him up, and it hit zero when they landed on the ground. A shot clock violation, says Don Daly. That'll be Tennessee basketball. You know, with all After the- After review, shot clock violation. He goes over and talks into the uh, box. Again, the microphone. What you learn from the veteran team here, Jimmy, they've been together for a long time. Seth Greenberg in the studio talks about getting old, getting better. The benefit that Barnes has is so many of these guys have been around, and yet Connect shows up, and the new guy is such an impactful player. And how about the hustle of Mayshack there? Give it to him. Adu keeps it alive. Connect. Frustration on the face of Florida. Uh, Zion pulling, very frustrated the way things are going right now. But, but Ravi, just getting old it doesn't mean you got better. Right. I mean, you, you've got to do to put the work in. Jonas Adu has put the work in. Mayshack has put the work in. This Dalton Connect kid is a perfect example of what work does oh, for you. Condon had it, and he missed another bunny. Second time he's had an easy left-handed layup and just overshot it. Good pass, Adu ripped by Samuel. You can see the body language of the Gators right now, down 19 and missing layups and just getting out hustled. The 50-50 balls, which they've been so good at, are going all Tennessee's way tonight. We talked about it in the open, Florida comes in with a really good roster, but they're looking at one and three to start SEC play, and they still don't have a quad one win. And you're Right now, Florida, look at Joe, Lark, Joe Lenardi has Florida projected as on the outside looking in. Now, there are plenty of opportunities to come on that Florida schedule, which helps everybody in the SEC this year, but they're 20 down on the road. It looks like they're going to let another huge, massive opportunity go by the wayside. Ziegler goes to the bench. One of the things Barnes told us during the shoot-around, they want to make sure they get him the rest. But not long ago, he had his ACL repaired. He's near 100% now. But all the minutes, they'd love to see Gillion give him some good quality minutes at the point guard position. Good help by the home crowd to holler Wolf. That Dalton Connect bringing the ball up, right? Yeah, I heard it. They gave him the awareness that a defender was coming. And Connect, it's a foul on Samuel. 
Read the body language. The Gators getting down right now. They prefer the sunshine. They don't like the snow, and they certainly don't like what's happening here at Thompson Bowling Arena, down 20. Back with Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravich. Look at the percentage chance to win the conference, thanks to ESPN Analytics. Interesting, Auburn, Alabama, now both are 3-0 today. Tennessee and Kentucky are on this list. I'm a, I guess I would say I'd be a little surprised at how far ahead Alabama is from Tennessee. I, I am surprised by it, our first time to see it, but you know, part of that has to do with the, the unbalanced schedule that we have in the SEC. Not everybody's playing the same home and homes, but for Kentucky to only have a 7% chance is very surprising. But those four teams are legit. And all are capable of getting to the Final Four. Kentucky's going to be really challenged, Ravi. Defensively, they got to grow. And yep. the numbers will tell you how hard it is to cut down the nets as a national champion with a true freshman point guard. DJ Wagner has grown tremendously the last two weeks. I can't wait to watch him again tomorrow night, but man, the pressure that's on you as a young guard to win six in a row. It can happen, it's just not easy. Uh, pull and kick, three ball, another one missed, and the loose ball still retained by the Gators. Another offensive rebound for Samuel. Clayton used yeah. that body to get into the body of Adu, and he will have a chance for a three-point play. How good was Walter Clayton on the drive that time? Jonas Adu got put on an island as a seven-footer. Rick Barnes not afraid to, to match guys up, but Adu gets that right foot too high, and Walter Clayton Jr. just attacks it. But to your point, he goes right through the contact of Adu. Former wide receiver, a lot of teams wanted the well, One of the challenges it feels like for Kentucky when you look at a team like Tennessee and all their veteran players, the bodies are just more mature. They are more physical. When you have all those freshmen, it takes some time before, you know, you look at Reeves, who has gotten bigger and stronger for Kentucky because he's been within the program for a couple of years, been in college for years. Well, the bad turnover by DeLeon, who, to your point, Zakai Ziegler needs someone to come in and provide backup minutes. Dillion right now struggling in this game defensively when they first put him in and with a turnover. We'll find out about Kentucky's physicality tomorrow night. Mississippi State, no joke in that area. Boy, a two on one, you come away empty. It's not good for Florida. Adu missed a bunny. He picks up his own rebound. The other thing we're going to learn about, Alabama. So they have Tennessee on Saturday, and then they have Auburn in their next game. Two massive tests for Nate Oates and the Crimson Tide. To back me, to back. Watching Alabama this past week, they're starting to tighten up their defense a little bit. Last time I looked, they still lead the nation, Alabama does, Ravi, in points they score in the first 10, 10 seconds of the possession. And they race that thing up, they shoot it with freedom. A big time test for Alabama rolling in here Saturday against Tennessee. Because have some points in that game? Oh my goodness. Quick ones. Speaking of points, Tennessee right now. Scoring 1.34 points per possession. That would be the seventh highest allowed by Florida in the last 20 years. That's how good that this year's Tennessee team is. They'll, they'll, they'll throw some stats at a lot of teams this year that we haven't seen out of Tennessee over the last 10 or 12 years. Get a lot of free throws in the last six and a half minutes. Both teams in the bonus, each nine fouls. The Gators will tend to do that. They force the action on you inside the paint. James and Kugel talk with each other. We give credit to the officials too. I know we all had our own travel issues getting in here and some came early and others stayed over in different cities to get here. But you, know, you talk to some of the officials and some of the things that they need to do to get here, and you start reading ahead on the weather forecast, and you're planning on maybe being home for a day, and instead an about face, and you turn around. Courtney Green said, my wife brought clothes to the airport yeah. so I could just get on another plane to get here. Certainly appreciate the effort of the officials to make sure they're at the games. Right, those guys, those college basketball officials, they love the game. They truly love the game. And the layers of accountability on top of those guys, from the film that they study afterwards to the reports they get passed down from 
those coordinator of officials, the constant video reviewing that's going on. Vescovi into the paint. They love him in there because he's such a good passer. And now 31 points for Dalton Connect. Drives it hard, left hand, that's pretty. And remember I described him driving the ball with length. That's a great example of it right there. He's literally almost outside the lane when he releases that thing with a left paw. And a lot of times, you know, a guy, her favor, he likes to go to his right, likes to go to his left. Connect oh, yeah. can go either way and do it really well. Yeah, even balance, I said it in the first half. 18 times coming into his right, 17 times to his left. Two straight line drives. The complete package offensively for this kid. 33 points for Connect off a 36 point effort in his last game. They get it to him again. He can rise up, he's got five on the shot clock. Feels like a fadeaway. Missed there, and the rebound of Walker. That's no good. A big time push. Aberdeen the reverse. That's when they are their best. And Tennessee's done a pretty good job this ball game of getting back and building the wall. Speaking of, that's going to be reverse. No good, and that's going to be off a of Walker. Watch Dalton connect. His ability right there, man, to get that long left arm reach and the finish. And he's just barely inside that pro lane line on the release of the shot. Just can't get to his ball. Gators here, and there's the pass to Aberdeen. There's contact, the walk up, went straight up, didn't bring his arms down, no foul. Connect one-on-one -on -one with Kugel. Fades, and he can't get it to go, but he'll get two shots. What a strong wall by Tobey Awaka, though. And he goes straight up, a legal play. And to keep his elbows by his ears is how you teach it. Look at that right there, man. His elbows were right beside his ears when he left the ground, therefore going straight up. You cannot teach it or execute that principle of verticality any better. So connect after points 34 and 35 from the free throw line where he has made all six that he has taken tonight. Super Tuesday double dip continues. The Pittsburgh Panthers host the Orange of Syracuse. That's coming up at 7 Eastern over on ESPN. And then Hunter Dickinson and Kansas will be in Stillwater. They get the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Both games are over on ESPN and on the app. Connect knocks down another one. 35 points. Last ball to score 40 in a game. I think we did that was Grant Williams 43 and 19 against Vanderbilt. Well, why does Tennessee look different this year than they have in the past? Think about this. The last SEC player, Ravi, with back-to-back 30-point -back games was Brandon Miller at Alabama. Yep. And that's what this kid has done for Tennessee in terms of a guy that is just different than anybody else on the floor from an offensive standpoint. We now have gone over 25, three straight games for Connect. Back-to-back -back 30, Lofton in 06, and back-to-back 35-point -back games. Houston in 90, and look at the numbers in his last three games. 28, 36, and 35. And one of the uh, Tennessee officials said, let's see if we can get Connect to do it at home. The prior two were on the road, and clearly it doesn't matter where he is. Condon and Iwaka, now it's Condon and Meshack, and he forces that one. Great defense in the hands of Ziegler. Tennessee's defense intense and terrific here this second half. Connect the pull-up, money. That, that is what Tennessee basketball is in transition. They win the race to the elbow. That time it was a connect with an easy pull-up. He's got 37 now to match a career high. Tough pass by Kugel. He tried to thread a needle through four volunteer hands. The guy has 37 points. You have to fight Dalton Connect for 40 minutes. Is it easy? No, but it's also not easy to get back on the plane with a 20-point Loss on your head. Dalton Connect just dribbled into a wide open elbow shot, Ravi. Six foot six, 213 pounds out of Thornton, Colorado, junior college, and then Northern Colorado. And he asked Todd Golden, like, did you know about Connect in the transfer portal? And he said, yeah, we, we were aware of him. But he used the word popped. He said he came to Tennessee and he just, he has popped since he got here. And that's for sure. 
He told me back in October he came to Tennessee because of the toughness that Rick Barnes was going to coach him with. Toughen him up defensively and toughen him up offensively. Message sent, message received so far by Dalton Connect under Rick Barnes. Three away from 40, and this crowd is on its feet when Connect has the ball in his hands. He rises. He felt the momentum of the crowd, and he looks over at Barnes, who looked back at him. <laughs> The coach, the crowd was telling me to shoot. <laughs> oh, man, there it is. They're out of conversion offense. It's a little bit of a bluff screen. Very much. Coach Bayham doesn't have to worry about being one and three on the road right now. He's doing games on the road for ESPN. Enjoying it a little bit more, probably, than suffered losses away from home. Three ball out of break, no good. Connect is still on the floor. It's amazing the reaction that he's getting from the crowd anytime he gets his paws on the ball. As he loves this double staggered action. That time it was for Connect, followed by Meshack, followed by Connect again. You gotta chase it, caboose it. Well, he's gonna have to shoot it here again. He's got four, three on the shot clock, triple teamed, and he lost it. Are they aware he's got 37 points? I know the fans may be. They as in the coaches. Why is he, it's a 79-58 game. He's the best and most important player on the floor. Time for a rest? I, no, yeah, no doubt. And he fired up that one in the last like that. media timeout. <laughs> and Rick Barnes said, hey, you're going to take the shot that the crowd wants you to take? You're going to continue to take our shots. And his heart, look at him right now. His nose-to-nose -nose hard coaching on a guy with 37 points. But that's why Dalton Connect came to Tennessee. He'll be the first to tell you. I am surprised, though, that he's still in with 2.41 to go. That other big game, he had 37 again against Carolina. And then it was in that game that he suffered that ankle injury. And he was out for a bit. And it took him a while to get his groove it back. Did. There's a couple of clunker games in there offensively, a one of seven performance. No doubt he's been the story tonight. And on a cut, did he get grabbed from behind? He did. So he will go to the free throw line and shoot for points 38 and 39. Tennessee careless of that basketball today. We mentioned earlier they were turning it over at one point, about 23% of their possessions, and it's dropped down a little bit to 21%. But it's hard to win tough games, Ravi, when you're turning it over two out of every 10 trips. Point 38. Yeah, 39. You hear somebody in the crowd yell out 39. Now on the big scoreboard up there are the five players that are in the game. The statistics of fouls and points are listed, so everybody in the building knows that his next point will be his 40th. The last guy to do it at home was Allen Houston. The last ball to do it overall, I mentioned, was Grant Williams in 19. Figure with about two minutes to go, this would be his last chance. A couple of guys sitting there at the scores table set to come in. All right, because he had a big fella come right down on top of him in Tyrese Samuel. Be nerve wracking times when you're up by 20. <laughs> bodies are flying, key players are on the floor. And they're going to leave Connect in. It's Ziegler and James that are out of the game. Dalton give a glance to the upper left corner here at Thompson Bowling where there's another score. And the five guys on the floor in their points. So he's he's aware that there's 39 hung up there right now. Ravi, the winning habits of Tennessee, anytime you're in this building, it just jumps out at you from how they practice, how they watch film, how they talk to one another, the accountability they have, player to player, player to coach. 
And that comeback they had at Georgia on Saturday, they were down 11 points with six minutes to go. Just to me, it spoke to the belief and the character and the culture that Rick Barnes recruits to. This right, Dalton Connect is just the fifth Division I player. Back-to-back 35-point back back back. games in the last three seasons. Wow. A note from Notaro. Mike Notaro, our statistician tonight. Pulling the hard take. No good. Loose ball. Hand locked in. Put it up and in. Hand locked in. Grew up playing lacrosse. And could have gone to college and played lacrosse. And he said that sport certainly helped out his physicality and endurance as well. And then the crowd just wants one more three from Dalton Connect. More contact and a chance to get his 40th. Dribbled into a double team. Mayshack was looking for him. He gets it to him. They're going to give him one more whack at it. A three ball. Way too strong. And he will very likely end his night with 39 points and get a standing ovation when he comes out of the game. The crowd is all here. It's as if they're giving away free food if we were able to get it. And Barnes says, not tonight. He calls the timeout as Connect was dribbling the ball down the floor. Well, a big time performance by Dalton Connect. We've said it multiple times. He is the best pro prospect in the SEC right now, one of the top pro prospects in college ball. If you're looking for a two guard at the next level, it'll be hard to pass up Dalton Connect. Would be I tell for you, me. I tell you one thing, too. Ziegler went over there and. <laughs> Like Rick Barnes doesn't know how many points he has. He starts cheerleading. Can we keep him in to get 40? And he looked at him like he was crazy. Estrella gives a little late game throwdown. Well, Ravi, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock, you know, we'll be back in here for Alabama, who right now is unbeaten in SEC play. And this building will be filled to capacity. A high octane Alabama offense comes in, scoring as fast as anybody in college ball. Tennessee, the difference of this year, they can lock you up defensively, but they also have a guy that can carry them offensively. That game will be fun, and I want you to enjoy your uh, drive. Be very safe on the way to Kentucky tomorrow night. Statement night for Tennessee, and another chance on Saturday against Alabama. It's been a while since Florida has rolled into Thompson Bowling and come away with a win. That's now eight in a row over the Gators for the Vols. Connect ends up with 39. Adu was a star as well. For our entire crew here, I'm Carl Ravitch saying so long with Jimmy Dykes. We'll see you again on Saturday. It's time for tennis and the Australian Open.